Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Forum BX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. And today I'll be taking a look at one of the few, one of the proud, a G.I. Joe Marine in dress blues, the 1987 Gung Ho, better known in collector circles as Gung Ho version 2. Now, Gung Ho is a 1983 character and is well represented in both the comic books and the cartoons in his first version of his outfit but he only makes one appearance in the comic books uh, in his formal wear, and that is G.I. Joe issue number 22 when he's attending General Flagg's funeral, and that's a 1984 issue, so I'm pretty sure that this uh, outfit is not meant to represent that one issue. Um, I do have a theory about that, and that theory is based on the cartoon of which he has absolutely no appearances uh, wearing this outfit. But I'll get to that a bit later. One design change the figure has over the very distinctive Marine Corps uniform is his jacket actually should have extended below his belt here. But I think that that's a reasonable change because the Marine Corps office was actually kind of strict with their trademark in the 70s and 80s. so. That's probably why that change is there. Gung Ho comes with his non-com dress saber, which a non-com is just short for non-commissioned officer, because Gung Ho is a E7 gunnery sergeant and has been since 1983. It's just connected to this rather big knob here and the secondary peg just holds it all straight also listed on the um, cards contents list is his dress hat the funny thing is, is that his hat is not removable or at least it shouldn't be because it's actually glued onto his head I have a drunk junker figure here so the glue has actually cracked off over time and the hat is actually a, a very shallow thing and doesn't really fit on anybody else's head it's also a, a bit hard so it doesn't really like squeeze down on uh, anybody's head to fit and as you can see I'm not I'm just not entirely convinced that this was meant to be like designed to be removable at any point because it, it just it just seems like this is sort of a, an unfinished head What's not listed on the card that you also get is a small little sticker sheet with three stickers on it. Now, Gung Ho comes with his campaign ribbons, which you have to put on yourself, as well as his rank chevrons, one on each side of his arm. Unfortunately, I have no idea what rank this is supposed to be. I only have two complaints on an otherwise really, really good figure. The first is the knob, which holds the saber on. Um, quite frankly, it sticks out way too much. And if you're looking for a figure on the aftermarket, make sure that knob is actually there, as it's very easy to crack off. The other one is, it may be a little hard to see, but um, Gung Ho is kind of pigeon-toed. And all the figures are like that. Um, I have heard a rumor that it's actually designed that way so that when the figure's feet are totally together it um, it does give the impression that he's standing like uh, extremely extremely straight which I can kind of understand but um, quite frankly I don't like posing him that way. In 1987 Gung Ho replaced the 1983 through 1985 version of himself at least on the shelves anyway. As a matter of fact, um, take a look at that held sculpt. They really kept the distinctive face. Makes me wonder if it's actually based on anybody. Gung Ho is the only returning character for the 1987 year. Had Sunbow Animation been given the go-ahead by Hasbro, 
to produce a cartoon season three, Gung Ho would have appeared in this dress uniform as shown on defunct solicitation ads from 1987. It is my belief that as a returning character after the new direction point the animated movie started, much like the 1986 Transformers movie, Gung Ho would have been a mentor character to all the new recruited G.I. Joes, so his dress uniform represents a kind of non-field combatant status. Gung Ho's stickers are made of paper, so they're very, very easy just to fall off over a very short period of time. Uh, up until recently, uh, Gung Ho's with their stickers on were actually attracting a bit of a, a value premium. However, now CobraStickers.com is actually making reproductions, uh, plus accurate rank markings, plus even rank variations. In case you're using your 1987 Gung Ho as a, a custom base to make other marine characters. Although I suppose you could cut off the lower two stripes on the original stickers just to make it look sort of like the gunnery sergeant or rank chevrons. Although that blob in the middle certainly doesn't look anything like two crossed rifles as it should. Unfortunately, the 1987 Gung Ho really does stand alone in the original 1982 to 1994 vintage series of figures, because no other U.S. military service branch is represented in their dress uniforms. It would have been a really easy thing for Hasbro to do as maybe like a mail order set. Uh, I'm not sure if individual figures the way Gung Ho was sold would have been the best route because I, I've always gotten the impression that he wasn't entirely all that um, popular uh, as a single single figure on the shelves back in the day, although now he is most certainly a very sought after figure. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.